again we come to you in the name of your son Jesus Lord we come to say thank you thank you oh God for your manifold blessings we thank you for your mercy for they are new every morning dear Lord God we just thank you for this week that you have taken us through we thank you for how you watched over us how you kept us how you protected us oh God how you just provided all of our needs dear Lord how you kept us Lord, in our right mind, kept us thinking on you, kept us knowing that you are God, and besides you, Lord, there is no other. And we just thank you, Lord, for this day, for this is the day, Lord, that you have made. And Lord, we are rejoicing and we are glad in this day. We are glad, O oh God, for you. We are glad, O oh God, that you have us, O oh God, to come boldly to your throne, your throne of mercy, your throne of grace, O oh God, where we'll find help in the time of need. And we just thank you, Lord, because, Lord, you promise in your word that you will not leave us and you will not forsake us. And God, you never did and you never will because you are God. You're the one who made us. You're the one, oh God, that know everything about mankind. Inside and out, Lord, there is no secret, oh God, about us that, God, that you do not know. And we just thank you, Lord, because you, Lord, are the one that's lead us and guide us every day, Lord. And God, we asking you now that you just continue to pour out your blessing upon us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. God, I pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, because we know heaven, oh God, has great and mighty things. Heaven, oh God, has peace and joy. Heaven has comfort, oh God. Heaven has what earth need. And God, we seek you, hallelujah. We seek you this day for heaven blessings, oh God. We seek you, oh God, that heaven, oh God, will shine on us in the name of Jesus. My God, my God. God, I pray now for those that are waiting on you, Lord, those that are calling on you, God. There is one, God, that has called on you, Lord, a long time, God. You heard it, God, from the get-go, from the first time, Lord God. But we thank you, and we're just waiting for the manifestation, oh, my God, of those requests that are before you right now. God, you said in your word that the prayers of the saints, oh, God, come up before your nostril as a sweet smell and savor, oh, God. And, God, we thank you right now for prayer. We thank you, God, for the prayer of the righteous availeth much, oh God. And God, you told us in your word, uh, you said men ought to always pray and not to faint, God. God, we thank you, hallelujah. God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Uh, prayer is the way, oh God, uh, that we approach you, Lord God. Uh, and God, we thank you for you hear the prayer. You know, God, uh, even before we speak it, uh, you said in your word, uh, you know our thoughts are far off. Uh, you know our down sitting, our uprising, our going out there, Lord. Uh, there is nothing, God, that you do not know. And God, we thank you right now, hallelujah. Mm. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Have your way this day, Lord. Have your way. Let your word touch somebody's heart today. Hallelujah. Oh, God, that soil heart, that hard heart, that cold heart. My God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit right now, Lord. We'll quicken somebody, oh, God. We'll turn somebody around now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we'll bring peace and comfort, uh, Lord, to somebody right now. Hey, God, hallelujah. As the prayer come up before you, Lord, uh, let somebody be touched. Uh, let somebody be encouraged. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Uh, thank you for lifting right now. Thank you, Lord, uh, for bringing peace right now. Thank you, Lord, uh, for working it out right now. Glory to God. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for drying up somebody's tears right now. Thank you, Lord, uh, for turning the situation around. Thank you, Oh, God, hey, God, thank you, thank you, thank you for your care, for your concern. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your empathy, God, that you have for your people, Lord. You love everybody, no matter who they are, God. 
Oh my God, your love is everlasting. Your love is unconditional. Your love is steadfast. And God, we just thank you. Hallelujah. God, I pray now that your love will be shared abroad in the heart of everyone, every stony heart, every cold heart. Let it be turned, God, into a heart of flesh, a loving heart. Let love, oh God, mm, let love reign, oh my God, in the heart of your people. Love, love, love. You said to love, hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you for your love. Hallelujah. Help mankind to love one another. Help mankind, oh God, to have sympathy, empathy, compassion, Lord, one for another. My God, my God, glory to your name, Father. Look on us, oh God. Oh God, all over this world, everywhere, Lord, those that are suffering, those that are going through hard time, those that are bereaving, those that are crying right now, God, I pray for them, Lord. You meet them, God, right where they are now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Move upon them, Lord. Let them, oh God, feel your presence now. Let them, oh God, oh God, know that is you. You speak to them, Lord, in the way that you so desire. My God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the body of Christ everywhere, Lord. Every born again believer believer, every one God, and I pray, Lord, for those that do not have a relationship with you, God, my God, let them know it is in there, it's available, oh God, you sent your son, Jesus, that we might be saved, oh God, as you said in your word, a man must be born again, and God, I'm praying now for those that do not know you in the pardon of their sin, God, hallelujah, speak to every heart, that young person, that old the person, that adolescent person, that senior, oh God, no matter who they are, hallelujah, you love everyone, you care for everyone, God, oh my God, and God now, we receive what you have for us, we know God, you have heaven's best for us, we thank you, hallelujah, for loving us so much, for just smiling on us and helping us and keeping us, oh God, hallelujah, mm. Hallelujah. Let your word be buried deep in our heart today, oh God. Let your songs, let the music, God, just soothe someone, even now, God, that one that's lying in the bed of affliction. God, let your word touch them. Let the music, let the songs, the words soothe them, Lord. Oh, my God. Thank you for helping right now. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for healing right now, God. Thank you for lifting someone now, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, we pray. Uh, God, we come against every sickness, every infirmity, and every disease. Oh, my God. Ah, uh, God, you're a healer. You're a healer. You're a healer. You're a deliverer. You said it in your word. And God, we're going to believe your report. Your report. Hallelujah. By your stripes, Jesus, you say we are healed mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Hallelujah. Thank you for healing. Thank you, God, for your outpoured love. Bless each and every one of us today. Bless us and keep us. Hold us, oh God, I pray, in the hollow of thine hand. Keep on smiling on us. God, help us, oh God, to know that it's you, Lord. It is you that is helping. It's you that is strengthening. It's you that are making whole. It is you that is setting free. Oh, now my soul, love you, God. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to God, glory to God. Bless God, bless God, bless God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning and welcome to our Grace Digital Worship Experience on this special Father's Day morning. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and all of those who serve in the role of fathers for so many. We celebrate you on this day. 
As always, we are going to prepare ourselves to enter into the sanctuary, prepare your hearts, your minds, your spirits for worship on this morning. So join me as we enter in the sanctuary today. Here at Grace, we are committed to connecting to all creation with love, compelled to cultivating all of those connections with grace, and conditioned to confronting all circumstances with hope. That is who we are. We repeat that every week because we want to embed in our minds, heart, and soul who we purpose ourselves to be as a gathered community of faith. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to the Grace Worship Experience. For all of our members and consistent visitors, welcome back. It is our prayer that something transpires in our service today to draw you closer to God in your individual walk as we join together in our collective walks of faith. God bless you and let us prepare our hearts for praise and worship. I 
worship and adore. I worship and adore. Just want to tell. Just want to tell. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yeah. 
Amen. Uh, we are ever grateful for the very presence and spirit of God that continues to dwell with us and allow us to enter into spaces of worship. We're grateful to God for that. I always want to say thank you to our, our music ministry for continuing to make the sacrifice and to intentionally work to lead us into an atmosphere and a space of intimacy and worship with God. Uh, let me also again say happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and fathering spirits, mentors. Um, we celebrate you on this day. Um, I'm, I'm blessed. I was here at the church and uh, one of our lay readers, Brother Skip, came and, and he said, Pastor, we have all this talk about different people and positions that are essential. And so he brought me a sweatshirt to help me be reminded that, that I am essential in this season. And so I'm grateful to Brother Skip for that. I told him, I said, man, I'm going to wear that. Uh, to, to deliver the sermon on this week. So that is what I'm doing. Um, grab your Bibles or open your Bible app and turn with me to the book of Lamentations. Lamentations, uh, it is just after Jeremiah and right before uh, Ezekiel. We don't often go here, but um, this week I was driven to, to this particular book and and the particular passage jumped out that we're going to focus on today. Lamentations, the third chapter, and I just want to lift verses 19 through 24. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and we find these words. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words from my mouth and the collective meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, oh God, for you're indeed our rock, our strength, and our eternal hope. And for that we say thank you. Now, God, speak by your spirit. Empower us, oh God, by your word. We need to hear from you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say amen. Amen. This week has been a tough week for me personally. And I would imagine that it has been tough for a lot of us for a lot of different and varying reasons. It has been difficult for me because I have been struggling with despair and hope. Despair because of all that we see and, and conditions that, that, that seem too difficult to tackle and, and going against uh, Goliaths that, that appear to be larger than life. But at the same time, because of who we are and claim to be as children of the Most High God, that we have an eternal spring of hope that is always welling up within us. And, and it is the constant warring between despair and hope that, that oftentimes make the living, the daily living difficult because depending on circumstances or depending on, on, on attitudes and perspectives or depending on what is actually happening in our individual lives, one day despair might find itself getting the best of us and it makes it difficult to hope. Although we know and think and, and academically believe that hope is always available in those moments, it becomes difficult to express that we are people of hope because the roots of despair have sunken so deep within us. That's why some of us find it difficult 
these days to just get out of bed, difficult these days to just entertain the daily routines, difficult these days to, to just have conversations, difficult these days to just do the responsibilities that we have to do at work or with family. And it's difficult because oftentimes our souls get weary with having to wrestle between despair and hope. Sometimes we, we become fatigued because we are warring within our spirit. The, the hope that I want to have is having to compete with the despair that seems to so naturally want to overwhelm us. And so when the Spirit led me to the book of Lamentations, which is, is a, a, a poetic writing and expression and and if you look at the book of lamentations it is one of those where it lets us know that even captured in scripture it is all right for us to lament it is all right for us to to express the level of despair and frustration and hurt and anger that we may be feeling it is all right for us to declare in moments that it does not seem life has been fair or is fair. It does not seem that God is being equally merciful to all of us. It does not seem that God is paying attention to the conditions of the people who so faithfully believe and render and surrender themselves to the will of God. In those moments, it's all right to express that which you feel because it's real. It is so real that we cannot ignore it. And if it's real and it's happening within us, then we got to know that the God who dwells with us and in us already knows. The book of Lamentations is not one, even in this chapter 3, if you read to the end of chapter 3 or if you read the entire book, it's not one that, that leaves us with the Hollywood happy ending. It, it is one that, that continues to allow us to see the teetering of one between despair and hope. Despair because of what you see, but hope because of who you believe. Despair because of the external situations that are happening in your life, but hope because of the internal source that dwells within you. And it is that warring between despair and hope that we see in the book of Lamentations that many of us live in our daily lives. We, we, we have realities that, 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 that force us to contend with, man, God, how long will you see to allow these things to happen in our lives? How long, God, will you allow the unjust to prosper? How long will you allow these things to go on? How long will it seem like for a segment of our society that it became all right to dehumanize and devalue very living beings? Your creation how long God will you allow these things to happen I, I, I reflect if you read earlier up in the writer is saying in verse 10 he's talking about and expressing that which he feels that which has been welling up that which is the source of his lament that he's writing and he says God he he is like a bear lying in wait for me a lying and hiding. He led me off my way and tore me to pieces. He has made me desolate. And he bent his bow and set, and set me as a mark for his arrow. Well, he's talking about, about life, right? He's all of this that he's talking about in, in, in how he understands what has been allowed to happen to him. Because if you go to the very beginning, he says in verse 1, I am one who has seen affliction under the rod of God's wrath. So, so this is personal. This is personal. This is a wrestling of faith that I believe that I am one with God. I'm in a relationship with God, but yet under in that relationship, I feel as if I've been under the wrath. Oh my God, listen to the description that he is lying like a bear and he ripped me from the path that we've been walking our path, but some things happen. We have experienced losses. People have died. We have, have, have had tragedies come our way and it feels as if we've been ripped off the path in which we were walking and we've been made targets for the very arrows. Can you hear how personal it is? is when you feel as if 
God is not for you. Man, can you imagine? Yes, you can. How many times must we endure the tragedies that come? How many times must we endure the tragedies at the hands of those who mean evil? How many times do we have to look at systems that are unjust, systems that are unfair? How many times must we look at those who benefit on the backs of others? How many times are we forced to endure systems that don't recognize the full humanity of others? How long will we have to fight against the inadequacies that we see around us? How long Long will we have to advocate for those who are homeless and orphan and widows without the recognition or help of others with the resources? How long, God, will we have to endure what seems to be unbearable? If you've ever been there, and if you're there right now, I encourage you to focus on what the writer shares with us in these 22nd or 21st through 24th verses. He gets to the point in verse 19 where he says, the thought, the very thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood, wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. See, that's the disposition that many of us find ourselves in, where our soul is wearied because our soul is thinking about the afflictions that affect so many of us. And for some of us who are empaths or interpaths, who, who we might not necessarily be feeling the full brunt of the afflictions that so many around us are, but because we take serious what it means to be community, what it means to be neighbors, what it means to be connected as a family of God, then what happens to one also affects and impacts what happens to the other. And so we feel the brunt of the community impact and the afflictions upon so many we are connected with, that our soul continues to think of it. Our soul continues to see how difficult it is. Our soul continues to be faced with the realities that, that as much as we move forward, that there's always a reminder that the giant is still there and our soul begins to allow the despair to creep in in those moments to begin to deter us and make us want to consider giving up. But in that moment, the writer says, but this I call to mind when I get to those moments, when despair tries to get the best of me, when the situations begin to make me think that they are stronger than my God. In those moments, he says, I call this to mind. And therefore, because of what I call to mind, I begin to hope. I begin to allow the hope that I have to increase and swell so much that it begins to take more space than the despair. And, and he says, this is what I call to mind. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. I don't care what it looks like today. God's love never ceases. I don't care who has given up on you. God's love never ceases. I don't care how difficult it might seem. God's love never ceases. I don't care how many you thought loved you begin to walk away. God's love never ceases. And for that, we can celebrate and shout hallelujah. I thank you, God, that you always love me. I thank you, God, that your love for me endures through everything, all of my flaws and my faults, that there is nothing I could ever do to separate myself from your love. He says when he begins to remind himself of that, he takes hope. But he pushes even further. Not only does the love of the God of the Lord never cease, but he says his mercies never come to an end. Oh God, 
The mere fact that some of us are still standing right now, this morning, wherever you are, if you're seated in your living room, laying in your bed, wherever you might be, the fact that we are breathing right now, we are a testament to the mercy of God, that there are a lot of things that should have took it, taken us out. There are a lot of things that should have overwhelmed us to the point that we broke or gave up, but thanks be to the mercy of God that we continue to see ourselves putting one foot in front of the other and walking continuing no matter how difficult the path or the journey it's the mercy of God that continues to surround us and remind us that we can still keep forging forward we can still have hope because his mercies are new every morning my God I don't care how you went to bed last night but this morning if God gave you breath you woke up to new mercy you woke up to mercy that is not tainted by yesterday's problem but mercy that says I'm on assignment to follow you today. That's why David can say, all the days of my life, I was followed by the goodness and the mercy of the Lord, that your mercy today is just for today, that you don't have to worry about using up all your mercy. God says, I got enough that I can make it new every morning. That's why you can't give up. That's why no matter how down you were yesterday, you got to be able to wake up this morning and give God thanks for new mercy that found you today. Then, then, I love this. He says, great is your faithfulness. My God, not only do we have new mercy, great is your faithfulness. Great is the faithfulness of God, that God is faithful to you and I. Well, God, what are you faithful to? Because I know in my attempts to be faithful to God, I don't always execute successfully. So I can't project my own shortcomings on God because God is not like me. God doesn't have my shortcomings. And so when we begin to push and ask, well, God, what are you faithful to? And I can hear the voice of my God saying, I'm faithful to my will in your life, that as long as I give you breath, you can trust and rest assured that I am faithful to my word. I am faithful to my spirit. I am faithful to my will in your life. So it does not matter what happens in your life. Don't give up hope because God is still faithful to what God is faithful to. And I thank God that he ain't like us and God's faithfulness will never fail. That's why we can have hope. And so the writer says, because of all of that, in verse 24, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. My God, the Lord, my soul then cries out that the Lord is my portion. When my flesh gets weak, my soul cries out, the Lord is your portion. When my mind is feeble and wants to give up, my soul cries out and testifies to the mind that my, the Lord is your portion. When I don't want to go forward, when I feel like it's too much, the soul cries out when it's anchored in God that the Lord, never forget the Lord is your portion. Therefore, you can always hope. You can always believe. You can always trust that every day new mercies will find you. You can always trust that no matter what tried to break you, it ain't able to do it because the Lord is faithful to that which he has created, that which he has called, that which he has assigned. My brothers, my sisters, may we hear our soul cries. May we, in the midst of all that we're experiencing, all 
of the feelings, all of the emotions, all of the confusion, all of the opportunities, all of the things that we're trying to negotiate, negotiate and navigate in our lives. May we be reminded this morning that the Lord is our portion and therefore we can hope in the Lord. We don't have to grow weary in making it through. We don't have to give up when the, the roadway gets rough. We got a reminder that the Lord is our portion. Therefore, because the Lord is always faithful, we can hope in that. I don't know what tomorrow holds for any of us, but if we are blessed to see it. I believe that there will be new mercy waiting on us. I believe that we will then be released to hope again in God. I don't know how today we'll try to wear down our hope, but I thank God that every morning we're blessed to see that we receive new mercy, that we're able to then hope again in God. Because God is faithful. Great he is the faithfulness of God. My God, remind yourself sometimes when you're looking at foes and they're looking at you and it seems like they got the upper hand, let your soul remind you, great is the faithfulness of God. Great is his faithfulness towards me. Great is the love of God in my life that I got to trust in the God that's in me more than I fear what I see outside of me. Wherever you are, Whatever it is that you're facing, don't be afraid to lament. Don't be afraid to be honest. Don't be afraid to tell God exactly how you feel. Don't be afraid to express how weary your soul might be. But like the writer in Lamentations, remind yourself that there is a reason why in spite of everything you might lament about, for you to still have hope. Because every day we get new mercy and great is the faithfulness of God unto you and I. Great is the faithfulness of God. You got to believe it. Great is the faithfulness of God. You got to declare it for yourself. Great is the faithfulness of God. You got to decide that you're going to place your hope on the faithfulness of God, not what you see that man is doing, but what God reveals in you. Great is God's faithfulness to perform that which God has said God will do. Pray with me today, wherever you are, whatever that might be going on in your life, hear the words of God for yourself. Great is the faithfulness of God. God, we thank you for being so faithful to us. We thank you, oh God, for continuing to allow your presence to walk with us. God, in those moments where despair has been trying to get the best of us, God, we ask for your strength. Give us the strength, oh God, to face everything with the, your assurance of your presence that's with us. God, in the places where we have given in, forgive us. In the places where we have been broken, mend us, build us, strengthen us, oh God. Give us your courage that we might walk more boldly in your power. Thank you, oh God, for all that you are. Thank you for everything that you're still creating us to be. We love you, we thank you, we trust you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say amen. Can we sing just a little bit of that? Great is your faithfulness. Wherever you are, allow that to wash over you. Allow yourself to join in in testifying collectively. Great is the faithfulness of God. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shelter from turning with
passion they fail not as thou hast been thou will ever with thee great is thou Amen. Listen, we thank God for the opportunity to worship together as a family. Listen, as always, let us be full participants in this worship experience. Join us in sacrificing. Join us in being generous and joyful sacrificers of our faith in God. Listen, whatever you have is never about amount. Never. It is about us being full participants as a community. We trust God to do that which only God can do, and that's to fill every gap. As long as we're being faithful and good stewards of, of the vision and the mission that he's called us to. Whatever you have, let us pray. God, please receive and bless these, our tithes and our offerings of love and of sacrifice. God, help us to be good and faithful stewards over everything you so graciously give unto us. God. We want to be everything that you're creating us to be in this season that we're walking in right now. We love you. We thank you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say amen, amen, amen. Happy Father's Day. And let us join in by singing our closing song, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow.
forever bless and always keep us. May he always raise his countenance and allow his face to forever shine upon us. May that same God continue to remind us that even in trying times, he is still our God and we are still his children. From now until we meet again on the other side where the sun neither rises nor sets. For the sun is Jesus, the Christ who's indeed the light of the world. It's in his name that we pray and let all of God's children say. Amen.